Welcome to part four in our video series on modeling a dipole antenna with HFSS. In this example, we're going to show you how we can tune our half wavelength dipole to be resonant at the frequency of interest, 1 gigahertz. As you recall, our results from the previous simulation runs, if you look at the S parameter plot, you can see there's a minimum around 920 megahertz or 0.92 gigahertz. Um, and, in, and also, if we look at the Z matrix plot, we'll observe that the the imaginary part of the Y matrix, which is this green line, crosses the zero value, indicating that the dipole is resonant at, again, at about 0.92 gigahertz. And this just reflects that the finite size of the dipole antenna has a little bit of extra capacitance associated with it, parasitic capacitance, and that pulls the resonant frequency down from the expected 1 gigahertz. So to tune this, we can do a couple of things. First of all, again, remember when we created the design, we had created a parameter for the length of the dipole that we set to 150 millimeters. So if we want to have this dipole be resonant up closer towards 1 gigahertz, we can just go to this parameter value and reset it to a slightly smaller value to try to get the resonance of the dipole to shift upwards in frequency. So somewhat arbitrarily, I'll set this to 142 millimeters. And when, now when I apply this parameter value, you see the results reports have all gone away, and that's just because that for this parameter value, we don't have results. But from here, we can just go back to the analysis, right-click on the 1 gigahertz analysis, and hit Analyze. And HFSS will go through the same process with this new dipole length to adaptively construct a mesh and give us our results. Now, really quickly, let's bring up the progress window just to see how things are going. You see at this point, it's just finished creating the lambda mesh refinement. Now it's doing the port refinement, uh, solving the fields on the port. With its first 3D mesh, it does pass one, then pass two after uh, doing some refinement. As these simulations run, we can look at things like the convergence criteria if we go to the solution data dialog. And on the convergence tab, look at the max delta S parameter as we're doing this adaptive meshing routine. You can also plot it. And remember, we set our goal to the default of 0.02. And when the red line falls below the green line, we'll have a converged model. This whole process is creating the adaptive mesh. Now that it's converged according to our setting, it'll now go through the process of creating an interpolating sweep. And again, the interpolation sweep process is basically sampling frequency points over the range of interest, which in this case is 0.8 gigahertz to 1.2 gigahertz. And we're asking for 401 data points uh, or 400 steps. And so it'll just sample certain frequency points within that band, create a curve fit to those responses, and determine how well that curve fit fit that response. So just after three or four points, it's completed its curve fit. Notice that it, we only saw four discrete frequency points to provide really an unlimited frequency response in the band of interest. If we go back and look at our S parameter reports, we can see indeed that we shifted up just a little bit. Uh, we're at about 0.97 here. And if we look at the Z matrix and observe the imaginary part of the Z matrix, we'll see that it uh, crosses again right at about that 0.97 or so. We headed in the right direction, but we didn't quite get there. So if we go back to the properties window that we see when we click on the design name, we'll make it a slightly smaller still dipole antenna by creating the length a little bit smaller and then we'll hit analyze again and again it'll go through the same process as before okay and as this simulation is wrapping up you'll notice that the uh, the s parameter plots and z matrix plots that we created they automatically update according to our settings at the completion of the simulation so let's go back and do a double click on those plot names and we're getting a little bit closer, but you know, not too bad. We're getting it, getting it tuned right in there. We also look at the Z matrix, and again, we're crossing, actually, we're crossing almost exactly at one gigahertz, which is kind of interesting. Why did we get a minimum just short of one gigahertz, but when we look at the Z matrix, we have it right at zero at one gigahertz. Well, what's happening here is, uh, if you go back and look at our excitation, which was a lump port, you'll notice that we had its uh, resistance set to 50 ohms, as well as its port renormalization. But if we look at the real part, of the, uh, the Z matrix, which is this red line. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and apply a marker to the plot. And I just sort of track it along here and I'll park it right there on the real part and click 
do a left mouse button click, and you see I get about 72 ohms. And that just reflects the fact that a resonant dipole antenna doesn't have an input impedance of 50 ohms. It has an input impedance of about 72 ohms. So what I'll do real quickly here is I'll go back into my port definition and go to post-processing, and I'll post-process the port impedance to 72 ohms. Now what this will do is this will affect those reports that we created earlier, in particular the S-parameter port. They automatically update with the change of that post-processing variable. And so now if I click on the S-parameter plot, right there I've got my resonant dipole with the very nice deep S11 dip right at 1 gigahertz uh, using a combination of tuning of design parameters and looking at uh, quantities like S parameters and Z matrices and also understanding what the input impedance of a resonant dipole should be. Okay, we thank you very much for uh, watching part four in our presentation on dipole antennas. And in part five, we'll move on to talking about doing optimization as well as setting up HPC analyses. Thank you very much.